In a dramatic turn, a country that once burned coal for nearly 70% of its energy, choking its skies and contributing heavily to carbon emissions, has slashed that reliance to below 50% in just a few short years. This isn't a distant fantasy, this is Poland's stunning energy revolution unfolding right now. At the very heart of this transformation stand colossal engineering marvels. Nuclear power plants. Consider the Westinghouse AP-1000 reactor, a single unit of which can generate over 1,100 megawatts of electricity, enough to power 750,000 homes. Its main containment building alone towers over 65 meters, taller than a 20-story apartment building with a diameter exceeding 36 meters, wider than a large basketball court. These structures are built to endure extreme forces, safeguarding the very core of our energy future. But how exactly will these silent giants operate and what hidden challenges lie beneath their towering presence as Poland attempts this monumental shift? For many decades, Poland's energy story was etched in the black of coal. Vast coal mines fueled power plants across the country, making it one of Europe's largest coal producers. This heavy dependence shaped its economy and landscape for generations. However, the idea of nuclear power isn't entirely new to Poland. Back in the 1980s, an ambitious project began to take shape at Zarnowiec, with construction starting in March 1982. This early attempt to build a nuclear plant was, however, abruptly halted in December 1989. The decision came amidst growing public concerns following the Chernobyl disaster and the immense political changes sweeping through Poland as it transitioned from a communist system. It was a time of great uncertainty and the dream of nuclear power was put on hold. The idea of nuclear power began to resurface in 2009 when the government officially decided to restart efforts on a national nuclear power program. This plan gained new life and urgency after Russia's military actions in Ukraine in 2022. Suddenly, energy independence was no longer just a goal. It became a top national priority. In response to this pressing need, Poland updated its energy policy, known as PEP 2040. This plan outlines a massive transformation, deploying between 6 to 9 gigawatts of nuclear energy by 2040. This is not just a small addition to the energy mix, it is a commitment to make nuclear power a cornerstone of Poland's future. Moving decisively away from its coal-dependent past and towards a cleaner, more secure energy future. The first large reactor is now expected to be ready by 2036, a slight adjustment from the earlier 2033 target, reflecting the complexities of such a monumental undertaking. Poland's first major nuclear power plant, known as EJ-1, is set to rise on the Baltic coast at the Lubiatowo Kopalino site in Pomerania. This massive undertaking will feature three Westinghouse AP-1000 nuclear units. Each unit is designed to produce over 1,100 megawatts of electricity, enough to power approximately 750,000 homes. This means the entire plant could power over 2.2 million homes, a truly staggering amount of clean energy. The AP-1000 is a pressurized water reactor, or PWR. Imagine a giant, super-efficient pressure cooker. Inside the reactor vessel, water is heated by nuclear fuel, but it is kept under such high pressure that it does not boil. This superheated water then flows through a separate system, transferring its heat to another loop of water, which does boil, creating steam. This steam then spins massive turbines, which are connected to generators that produce electricity. The AP-1000 is a Generation 3 Plus design, meaning it includes advanced features beyond older reactors, making it safer and more efficient. One of the most remarkable features of the AP-1000 is its passive safety system. This means that in an emergency, the plant can safely shut down and cool itself for more than 72 hours, about three days, without needing any human action, electricity from the grid, or even backup diesel generators. How does it achieve this? It uses natural forces like gravity, natural air circulation, and the stored energy in pressurized gas. For example, large water tanks are placed high above the reactor. If cooling is lost, gravity simply pulls this water down into the reactor, cooling it. This is like having a gigantic, fail-safe water balloon ready to douse any overheating. These systems contain significantly fewer components, 
which reduces the need for tests, inspections, and maintenance, making their readiness easy to monitor. The containment building for each AP1000 unit is a colossal structure. It is cylindrical, with an outside diameter of more than 36 meters, which is wider than the length of a professional football field. Its height is over 65 meters, making it taller than a 20-story skyscraper. This massive concrete and steel structure acts as the ultimate protective shell, designed to contain everything inside, even in extreme events. Inside, the reactor pressure vessel itself, where the nuclear reactions take place, is a heavy-walled steel cylinder. It is approximately 15 meters high, about the height of a five-story building, and has an internal diameter of nearly four meters. This vessel houses 157 fuel assemblies, each containing 264 fuel rods. The reactor core, where the heat is generated, has an active fuel height of about 4.27 meters, roughly the length of a large car. To cool these massive reactors, the Lubiatoo Copalino plant will use a once-through cooling system directly from the Baltic Sea. This means large volumes of seawater will be drawn in, used to cool the plant's systems, and then discharged back into the sea, slightly warmer. This approach is chosen because of the site's coastal location and the vastness of the Baltic Sea, which offers practically unlimited cooling resources. While the first plant is on the coast, Poland is also looking at a second large nuclear power station, likely in the central coal heartland near Pontnów. Here, the focus is on the South Korean APR-1400 reactor technology. The APR-1400 is another advanced Generation 3 plus pressurized water reactor. It builds on earlier designs, but offers significant improvements. A net electrical output of 1,400 megawatts, a 40% increase over its predecessor, and a design life of 60 years, 50% longer. It also boasts a 10 times lower chance of core damage compared to older designs, thanks to enhanced safety features like an improved safety injection system. The reactor vessel of the APR-1400 is a substantial component, measuring 14.8 meters high, similar to the AP-1000 vessel, and has an internal diameter of 4.7 meters. It weighs around 533 metric tons, which is roughly the weight of 350 standard cars. The containment building for the APR-1400 is a sturdy concrete cylinder with a radius of 23.5 meters, making its diameter 47 meters. It stands 54 meters tall, comparable to an 18-story building. Its walls are 1.22 meters thick, providing robust protection. Beyond large-scale plants, Poland is also heavily investing in small modular reactors, or SMRS. These are much smaller nuclear reactors, generally producing less than 300 megawatts of electricity. The key idea is modular, meaning they can be built in factories, then shipped and assembled on site. This promises faster construction times and lower costs because many units can be built in a series, like building blocks. One SMR type being considered is the GE Hitachi BWRX 300. This is a boiling water reactor where water boils directly inside the reactor vessel to produce steam. Each BWRX 300 unit can generate about 300 megawatts of electricity. The reactor vessel itself is approximately 27.4 meters long and four meters in diameter. The entire reactor building is designed to be relatively compact with an estimated height of 67 meters and a diameter of 36 meters. This building's foundation is planned to extend roughly 34 meters below ground, making a significant portion of the plant underground, enhancing safety and security. Another SMR technology Poland is exploring is the new scale VoiGR. What makes new scale unique is its power module concept. Each new scale power module, or NPM, is a self-contained unit about 23 meters high and 4.5 meters in diameter, roughly the size of a large school bus stood on its end. Each module can produce 77 megawatts of electricity. A VoiGR plant can connect up to 12 of these modules, creating a total output of 924 megawatts. Poland plans to deploy up to 24 BWRX 300 reactors at various industrial sites like Ostrowanka and Wokławek, these SMRs are seen as crucial for providing clean heat and electricity directly to industrial users, 
helping to decarbonize heavy industries that traditionally rely on coal. This signifies a shift in nuclear power's role beyond just large-scale grid electricity. However, building a new energy future is never without its obstacles. For example, building nuclear power plants requires an immense and specialized supply chain. Transporting massive components, like a BWRX 300 reactor pressure vessel, weighing around 650 metric tons, which is heavier than 400 cars, requires specialized ships, barges, and heavy lift equipment. Securing these components, often with long production times, and ensuring their timely delivery is a huge logistical puzzle. A major challenge is finding enough highly skilled personnel, from engineers and construction workers to future operators and regulators, the nuclear industry demands specialized training and experience. Poland faces a shortage of qualified personnel, which could significantly delay construction and future operation. Building this workforce from scratch is a long-term investment, requiring cooperation with universities and training programs. Before any concrete can be poured for these colossal structures, extensive site preparation is needed. At Lubiato Copalino, this involves in-depth geological surveys. Teams are drilling approximately 220 research points, reaching depths of 20 to 210 meters, to understand the ground conditions perfectly. This is like taking a giant X-ray of the Earth to ensure the foundation can support these massive structures, which must withstand seismic activity and other natural forces. This site also requires clearing forests and leveling large areas of land. Poland's existing electricity grid is already struggling. Between 2015 and 2021, over 6,000 requests for new power connections were refused, blocking about 30 gigawatts of potential new capacity, mostly from renewable sources. Integrating massive new nuclear power plants, which provide constant baseload power, will require significant upgrades to the grid to handle the increased load and ensure stable delivery. The regulatory approval process for nuclear power plants is incredibly complex and time-consuming. Projects can face permitting delays, with wind projects taking five to seven years and solar projects up to four years. Nuclear projects, being far more complex, will likely face even longer timelines for approvals, including environmental decisions and construction licenses. This regulatory maze can add years to a project's timeline, as shown by the estimated three-year delay in signing the main construction contract for the first plant. Building nuclear power plants is incredibly expensive, Poland's first plant alone is estimated to cost nearly 15 billion US dollars, which is about 30% of the total planned cost for the first phase. The government plans to provide state guarantees covering 100% of the debt and a contract for difference to ensure stable revenue for 60 years. Securing the remaining funds and getting approval for state aid from the European Commission are ongoing challenges, with a formal investigation procedure initiated in December 2024. A critical long-term challenge for any nuclear program is managing radioactive waste. Poland currently operates a single research reactor and has a national radioactive waste repository in Rosan, which has been operating since 1961. This facility was expected to be full by 2020, and Poland is actively seeking new sites for low- and intermediate-level short-lived waste. A comprehensive long-term strategy for high-level spent fuel is still under development, and the inclusion of spent fuel reprocessing in the updated plan without clear intent raises non-proliferation concerns. Poland's nuclear program is a bold declaration of energy independence. By building a robust nuclear fleet, the country aims to significantly reduce its reliance on imported fossil fuels, especially coal and gas. This strategic move makes Poland less vulnerable to global energy price swings and geopolitical pressures securing a stable and predictable power supply for its citizens and industries for decades to come. What do you think about Poland's bold nuclear plans? Let us know in the comments below. If you find this deep dive into nuclear engineering fascinating, hit that like button, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds for more incredible stories, and turn on notifications so you never miss an update.